Hi, everyone, and welcome to season five of Stand Up and Stand Out. Can you believe it? Are you to season five? It has been a whirlwind year already. A lot has happened. Uh, you guys know after listening to season four that I just launched Chameleon Mindset, my new book about how to embrace change and build mental resilience to transform your life and career. Lots more information obviously coming on Chameleon Mindset. We'll have the new online course coming soon. We've been doing lots of webinars and I'll be on the road for the book tour. So hopefully we'll get to catch up together soon. Um, but uh, because why not just do another one? <laughs> I have another book that just came out, The Great Lead Hership Awakening. In this book, I collaborated with uh, 20 other amazing women. Each of them contributed a chapter talking about when their lead hership was awakened and part of their transformation, maybe over the pandemic or maybe over a longer period of time. Uh, really stepping into their power and showing what it means to truly be a leader. Hello, everyone, and welcome to season five of Stand Up and Stand Out. We are interviewing the ladies of the great Lead Hership Awakening. So excited to have Ariana Charisse here today. Say hi. Hello, it's great to be here with you, Nikki. So excited to talk today and learn a little bit more about behind the scenes in your chapter. If you guys are looking in the book, uh, chapter four is Ariana's and it is chosen how caregiving is at the core of female leadership. And I'm sure lots of people can relate to this one. Um, so say a little hello and let us know a little bit about yourself. Well, it's great to be here with you. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. I love technology because I know you're up in Chicago, Chi-Town, and it's great to connect. Yes. And I love what I do, which is inspiring people to be their very best and to do what you have to do with a smile on your face and watch what happens. So I'm happy to be here to share some words of encouragement with those that may be going through something similar or know someone who is and know that you too can do it and do it to the best of your ability. Ariana is a leader who has applied her leadership skills in an extraordinary way to nurture and others. Words make a different, folks. One of the things I want to highlight is she says she was chosen to nurture, love, and care for her great-grandmother, grandparents, and parents. Chosen. The way we are purposeful with our life and the way we talk about ourselves and the, our calling is so critical. And Ariana, I know that this is near and dear to your heart and how you and you know help other people too see what they're doing and how important it is. Absolutely. I believe that it's important that whatever you do, you do it with all of your heart. Do it with excellence to the best of your ability. And I had no idea, even as a teenager, when my great grandmother would call me and ask me for things. I got it out there. I didn't know what, it, what where it was, but I found it. And sure enough, it was amazing just spending quality time with her. She lived to be 101, and I learned so much from her. She was an entrepreneur. She was amazing. She took care of her family. She did it all and, and made it look simple. And I learned how to cook, how to clean, how to do things that today have really been a blessing to my, my family and to all those that I've been able to, to nurture along the way. So it's been wonderful. Oh, that's beautiful. And I really say that. It's something that we've lost. You know, a lot of us got so busy, like I had to go be the thing and go do the thing sort of outside the house. And we forgot how important that connection and community is. Um, but that the community is raising our kids. It's not just mom and dad, but, you know, aunties, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, you know, lots of different people play a role. And it's good for kids to also have those other influences to just learn about a different time, see a different perspective. And obviously, I mean, folks before us have way more skills than most of us have. <laughs> so it's amazing to learn from them. I agree totally. Yes. And then I was able to help my parents as well. When COVID hit, they both had health challenges, and I'm just grateful that I was there to be able to assist them both. Yeah, it's it's so important. And I just got back from my walk, and I know one of the things you talked about was the challenge of getting your mom up every morning and really getting her to get outside. And even for those of us that are healthy, sometimes we're still having that struggle after the pandemic and working from home. 
So talk about, you know, kind of that importance and that first step in the day, you know, how to really get all of ourselves moving, but also if you're caring for others. Yes, I've discovered, Nikki, that the way you start your day, it sets the tone for the rest of the day. So when the pandemic hit in particular, I would work out maybe twice, three times a week, and then the gym closed. So I had to figure out a way to get exercise, get it all in, running a company, taking care of family. So I decided I would wake up every morning and go for a brisk walk, 20 minutes. And I discovered how well I felt after doing it that I committed to doing that for me every morning, rain or shine, I was out there. And I got to know my neighbors. (laughs) I got exercise, fresh air, and vitamin D, which gave me a boost to take me throughout the day. It it has really been a game changer, and I still do it today. It's fantastic. And it's something we, you know, like you said, just starting your day off on a different foot of don't just jump into email, don't just jump in the car, you know, don't just get to all that to-do list to really take a little bit of time out for self-care. And, you know, we did a lot of the same thing in the pandemic because I moved actually twice during the pandemic. So I was constantly, you know, in a new neighborhood and obviously there was a lot going on. And so it was really nice to get out and feel that sense of community. And so that way I felt not so alone too, is that if I really did need help, there was someone right around the corner, you know, to say hello to. And I was just thinking, you know, as you were, you know, helping your mom, obviously other people played a big role as well. So maybe talk about the importance of that community and that support um, through this process. It is valuable to have a team because it's too much for one person to do it all. So being a leader, I was able to use and transfer my leadership skills to put together a team to take care of my mother from physical therapy, doctor appointments, making sure her nutrition was intact, putting together an exercise program. I mean, from from the start of the day to the end of the day, there was something that needed to be done. And I'm so grateful. I interview people when I'm in meetings that could take care of her, found backup caregivers and just very grateful for all the people who served with a willing heart because that makes the difference when you have someone that you can depend on and know that they will deliver when you can't be there. Well, that trust factor is so important in those caregivers because, you know, you are, you're letting them into your home, you're letting them into your life, um, you know, and with someone who really needs the help. Um, my, my stepsister was severely handicapped. She had cerebral palsy. And so her entire life, she never walked. She was always in a wheelchair and, and we always had caregivers in the house. And then when my grandmother had a stroke, my grandmother was also there and also had caregivers. And so it, it was a lot, it was a lot, you know, even with the support for my, you know, my dad and my stepmom to be, you know, helping out with me and my younger sister helped when we could. But it was a lot to have not just one, but two people in the house that really needed round the clock care. So um, I really appreciate and thankful for those caregivers that come to do, you know, all those different activities to just take a little bit of time, you know, and burden off of you during the process. Yes, it's priceless. It makes the difference. And I thank them constantly and let them know that they are appreciated. Yeah. One of the lines I love, too, is just, um, you know, some of the most important skills that you learn during this patience consistency, the importance of hugs, kindness, caring, and sharing, that that's really what helped, you know, you get through it, but also your mom and for your mom to really recover through the process. Um, Maybe talk about how, you know, patience, I'm sure, of course, was number one in all this process. (laughs) That's so true, Nikki, because being results driven, I just do things without thinking about them. Like I don't wake up with an alarm clock. I'm one of those people, I just jump out of bed, it's time to go. Not the case with mom. She was like, I'm not ready to get up. And I'm like, okay, let's get up. She's like, no. I'm like, what do you mean, no? I said, we've got things to do. But in her mind, nothing was more important than getting her rest. So I created a game. It was called Roll Mama Roll. So I asked her to show me how you roll out the bed when you're ready to get up. And she would she she thought it was interesting so she took it on and she would roll out the bed and land on her feet and say and I'm like I'll do it again and then she got into the swing of things and then she wanted to perfect her landing it was really cute 
my goal was to get her out of the bed and she went along and I would give her a reason to wake up and tell her what we were going to do. And she get excited and smile. And I realized that everyone does things differently and your way might be different than my way, but the goal is to get to the finish line. So getting her up on a schedule every morning, you're up by nine, even though I'm up at six, I, I'm up earlier. And I'm glad that she's up by nine so we can get her day going because every doctor I spoke to, Nikki, emphasized the importance of movement. So getting her moving, getting those muscles, joints lubricated so she could keep everything flowing in the right direction. So it, it was a challenge at first, and I'm so grateful that we overcame that challenge with patience and with love. Yes. Yeah. And my grandmother said it to herself as well as when she couldn't be in the house with us anymore and she was in a care facility, she said she was just so cognitive, like she knew what was going on, but she was very mobile. So she was still moving around. She, you know, maybe using a little bit of a walker when she hit 90. <laughs> But, you know, she 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 knew she saw it in her friends around her. She saw the differences as soon as they had some kind of injury or, you know, just pain that didn't allow them to move, how quickly the cognitive piece, you know, started to to slip away. And so for her, it was a great motivation to even if it was just, you know, hop on down the hall, <laughs> go say hi to the neighbor. Right. That's right. And getting outside, I would often invite her to join me. And I knew I go walking and I knew that that wasn't she wasn't able to to walk as as fast as I walk. So I encouraged her to get in a wheelchair and I would roll her around the neighborhood. And she was resistant at first. She was like, no, I don't want to do that. And I said, but mama, it's so pretty outside. It's 80 degrees. And oh, just let's just do it for five minutes. She she agreed to five minutes. And when we got out there, she says, I think I want to stay a little longer. So a five minute walk turned into a 35 minute walk. And when she got back in, she was smiling and happy and it made a huge difference just to get sunlight. So now we go for walks and she goes for rolls. You talk a lot about how simple habits can make a significant difference. So, um, you know, like going for the walk in the sunshine, like just starting your day off with that, um, maybe some other simple habits that you guys found that really helped to contribute to, you know, the overall recovery process. Yes, I discovered drinking water is so valuable and sometimes we're dehydrated and don't even realize it. So not waiting until we're thirsty, but starting the day off with a nice glass of water, fresh water to start the day. Yes. And to drink throughout the day so that everything runs better with water since the body is over 70% water. So I discovered that for myself and things that I learned, I share them with mom and she, she tries them and some she likes and some she doesn't. And some she will do when I say, well, do it just for me, please. And she'll say, OK, so we'll do whatever necessary to help her feel better. I love it. But whatever gets them motivated, right, or even ourselves, it, it is those simple things. It's like drink water, get up, drink water, sit down, drink water, <laughs> and go on your walk, drink water. <laughs> yes. And it works. It's amazing what happens when you actually just drink water throughout the day and stay hydrated. I found sometimes when I was super busy, and, and I've seen people do this, too, where you know, it's like, oh, get up. I'm I'm kind of groggy. OK, some coffee, some more coffee, some more coffee. And then you're like, OK, I'm good. I can get going through my day. Then you start like eat lunch and then you start to crash again and then you have more coffee. And instead of really just like you said, sunlight, fresh air, you know, water, some of those more basic things are going to be way better for you than all these like sort of other stimulants and supplements that aren't really natural for us to be having. So. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Nikki Green and I am a life and business resiliency expert. I have been helping people for over two decades overcome their challenges and achieve their life and business goals. I wrote Chameleon Mindset for others seeking clarity while acclimating to new situations. This entertaining yet research-based guide to transitions will open your mind to unique strategies for finding purpose and achieving your goals. Through my new book, you will create the happy life you desire with five philosophies for change, beginning with C for creative adaptability. Move from resistance to resilience by assessing and adjusting your risk tolerance. 
The practical lessons in Chameleon Mindset will help you shift your mindset, sharpen your skill set, and overcome the things holding you back from dealing with change. We'll have the new online course coming soon. There are half a dozen modules in total, but the way you choose to pursue your destiny, it's up to you. Each module can be done independently or repeated as necessary to tackle new obstacles and new goals in your life. And you can earn extra chameleon coins for uncovering them. What are chameleon coins, you might ask? These are reward XP that you can earn to purchase additional chameleon mindset benefits as you progress through the course. You can get swag, group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, exclusive event tickets, and networking opportunities. And if you collect enough coins, you can even earn a full day VIP intensive with me to work solely on your goals. And by joining the Chameleon Crew, you will also gain access to my network of thousands of influential people around the world with expertise to help you on your business, your personal endeavors, health and fitness, and so much more. Reserve a copy today and click below to be added to our subscriber list. Well, Ariana, you've done so many other wonderful things in your career. Maybe you want to share a little bit about your career journey. We have a lot of young people, um, you know, that watch the podcast and they're, you know, trying to figure out their path. And I just like to tell people, too, it's not linear. You know, things do happen in our lives that we need to make sure we're we're alternating our focus. Um, and you've done such an amazing job of, of finding that harmony. So maybe share a little bit of, of that backstory as well. I'll be happy to. I actually attended Emory University and that was right out of high school. And I loved, I was fascinated with the human body, still fascinated. So I was encouraged to major in something that you're passionate about. So I chose biology and I loved learning and applying and seeing all the things that the body is capable of doing. So it was a natural occurrence when, when family members call for assistance for me to assist them because that's what I do. I love being around people, helping them feel better. I even actually read two children in the hospital who were sick and their families couldn't always be there. So I would just be that voice to help soothe them and comfort them and let them know it's going to be all right. So I've been doing this for years, but I never dreamed that the impact that it, it, it can make until looking back over the years. This is what I love to do, although I went to corporate, went into corporate America, did well, excelled. I went into financial services, did well and excelled, but I always came back to health and wellness. And I realized that's what I love. And that's why I encourage people to do what you love because skills are transferable. You can probably do many things and think about things that bring you joy, things that you would do whether you got paid for it or not, and create a way to monetize the gifts that you have so that you can really create a life that you love. And it works. It works for me and it works for those that, that I coach. I'm a wellness coach and I also speak to caregivers. I speak to, to inspire people to really love the beauty that is, that is around you and within you. And that's what I do. And I love doing it, Nikki. And that's why I'm glad when you invited me, it was just a good fit. It works. Exactly. Well, and, and this is what I tell people, too, is we're never just one thing. You know, I think a lot of people got the message of like, oh, you go to school and you do that thing and that's all you ever do. But the world has changed dramatically. And, you know, there is the, OK, I can do this job. Right. And I get the paycheck and I can do well. But maybe that's not everything to me. Maybe I get fulfillment through other things, through sports, through helping others, through, um, you know, whatever, whatever the thing might be. And you can do those things in addition to work and not be like so married and committed to the career that you forget all these other important aspects of your life, which is usually where you're going to find that fulfillment and, and the help of others. So. I agree, totally. Well, time flies when we're having fun, kids. It is time to sign off. But before we go, of course, we want you to know where you can find Ariana in case you want to find out more about, you know, maybe improving your wellness or maybe your caregiver and you could use some support. Uh, why don't you let us know where they can find you? Yes, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook as well as LinkedIn. That's Ariana Sharice, A-R-Y-A-N-A-C-H-A-R-I-S-E. And I look forward to 
speaking with you, to sharing with you, to helping you reach your goals in life. Thank you so much, Nikki. It's been a pleasure being here with you. Oh, thank you so much. And if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to grab The Great Leadership Awakening, a wonderful anthology of 24 women, which we're interviewing on Stand Up and Stand Out. So you can get to know a little behind the scenes of each of their chapters and get to know them a little bit better. Thank you guys all for joining. It's been a great episode and I can't wait to catch you on the next one. You'll find us where all the cool kids hang out, the Do Podcast. Bye. Thanks everyone for joining us today for another episode of Stand Up and Stand Out. You know you can catch us where all the cool kids hang out, the Do Podcast on all the major platforms. And if you want to connect with Nikki directly, you can get a hold of me on my personal site, the Nikki Green 360com There you can check out my website. You can see any of my new books. You can learn more about this podcast and follow us on social. Can't wait to hear from you and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.